Hello, it's Crafty Rhea, and I'm back again today with another video. Today's video will feature card sketch number seven. This features three squares, a piece of ribbon, and an embossed or decorative background of some sort. This card sketch is based on a regular card of a um, four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out to see my full work surface. I'm also featuring in this video today vellum. We had some discussion in the Facebook group Create with Crafty Rhea about using vellum and I promised a video on it and here is a video and I'll show you some tips and tricks about using vellum. We're going to make two cards with the card sketch one recycled Christmas card and one regular card. For the recycled Christmas card, we'll be using this vellum. I have some red construction paper and I'm going to cheat a little. I'm going to do it on a 5 by 7 card base because the images I found were a little too big to use on the smaller card base. I'm going to use three squares off of this Christmas card. I thought it would be really, really cute, and it will be a cute way to incorporate the vellum. I don't have an embossing folder for Christmas that is big enough for 5x7, but I did go ahead and grab that vellum out of my stash. We'll do that one second. The first card that we'll make is inspired by some goodies that I got in my latest Happy Mail. I have a video on that, and in that Happy Mail were these planner stickers, and there was this really pretty paper, and I thought they went really, really well together, and these are nice square stickers that would be perfect for this. I thought I would use Make It Happen, the coffee cup, and the pencils, since the other ones really, those two aren't that good for a card, and Enjoy Your Ride, I can use that on some bicycle paper or something later. So we'll go ahead and do those three. I also went in my stash and I found this, I don't know what it is, tweed ribbon, and it goes perfectly with this background. And it has almost a herringbone or a um, chevron pattern to it so I thought it would go really good with this paper. And this one, I have this envelope and this matting paper. It is a little different size. It is four, it's for a card that is four by five and a half. So I just trimmed one of my card bases down. I figure in this card sketch, we have a lot of room this way. I could give up a, um, a quarter of an inch. So. We'll go ahead with that. And I thought I would mat these on this so they don't get lost against the background. So let's go ahead and cut the background. So the card base is four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it just short of four. And if you look at the pattern, if I cut it right along this line here, it will be really good and it would leave the pattern intact. On It'll be symmetrical. So I'm going to cut it right across that line. There we go. And that gives me a nice little white background. And I will cut this other side at five and a quarter. And let's see how that leaves it there. That, I think, worked out pretty good. I think that came out perfectly for matting. And I'm going to set these scraps aside. Before I mat this paper down, I do want to put this ribbon on. I'm going to go ahead and cut it a little bit bigger than my card. Use my good fabric scissors. Get that piece of tape off. 
and I thought it would be nice to run this ribbon right down the point there. I think that would be nice. Just right along that point. And for the ribbon, I'm going to go ahead and just use my regular tape runner. Just try to eyeball it. I'm going to trim some off so we don't have a whole lot of bulk on the back. This ribbon is pretty thick but I do want to fold it over because it does fray. And this is double-sided paper and I did not have any trouble <laughs> picking the side that I was going to use. That's my problem with double-sided paper. I feel like I'm giving up one whole side. This one here did not fold over evenly, so let me refold that. There we go. And then that will go right on there. I'll go ahead and use my tape since I already have it out in my hand. And this paper is pretty thin. It's regular weight scrapbook paper. It's not cardstock. On thinner paper, I prefer to use a dry adhesive like tape. I'm going to go ahead and line it up and I'll show you my trick. You've, if you've seen my other videos, you know. I hold it in the corners, opposite corners, and I line up the other two corners. I eyeball them. And if they are lined up, then I set it down. There we go. Then I will go ahead and cut out these little stickers. I'm going to go ahead and use my cardstock. I know it is square on the edge. I have not cut into it. It is brand new. Oh, and these are nice and thick. These are like cardstock stickers. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a border. I'm going to go ahead and use three edges of this cardstock. Three corners, I should say. These are really nice planner stickers. And since I'm cutting such a small piece, I'm going to go ahead and bring this out. I think it's a little easier to cut small pieces with this. I'm just lining them up on here, just eyeballing that border just so it pretty much has the same size border all the way around. And if you didn't line it up the first time, you can go back and trim a little bit more off. I think these are going to be okay though. If you have square um, punches or die cuts, feel free to use those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do make it happen. And then those in the middle and this at the bottom. Do I want to make it a little uneven that way? Yeah, I like it like that. Maybe I want it like this. There we go. And 
and that's going to be my three pieces right there. I'm not going to use any foam tape or anything to raise it up high because this ribbon is pretty thick as it is and having it sit on there already gives it dimension. So I will use my glue or my tape run that across the back I'll do the bottom one next and that way it's easier to center the center one. And this card is done. That was real easy. It's kind of cute. I went ahead and left the center blank, the middle blank, inside. <laughs> And we have that envelope that matches it perfectly. And we also talked um, in the uh, Facebook group about decorating the envelope. So with my little bits of scraps here, this little piece kind of goes really cute right along the edge there. If it were a, a square envelope on the back, I would definitely do something like that. But I think with just this little piece, I'm going to go ahead and take my... We'll go ahead and use the tape again. I want to make sure, since this is going through the post office, that the very edges are taped down. And this is thin, so it's not going to be thick like a piece of cardstock on there. There we go. And then we just have that edge of the envelope decorated. And if you wanted to, you could even do something else on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it alone right now. I may put a sticker on the back to seal the envelope. So anyway, there we go. There is that card with the matching envelope. And how I store my cards with envelopes, I take it and I fold this back. I put the back part of the card. Of course, I would stamp my stamp on the back. I have a created by Crafty Rhea with my YouTube channel on there. And then I store it like this. And that way, everything is together and I can easily see what the card is and my matching envelope is right there. Okay, so for card number two, we're gonna talk a little bit about vellum first before we actually get into making the card. When you have vellum, it's really hard to find a way to adhere it down to your paper. I'm going to use this scrap um, so you can see what I'm talking about. If you were to use tape on it, you can see the tape behind it. You can see the line of tape behind it. If you use glue behind it, you're also going to see the glue. Now they do make vellum tape and um, like the glue dots that are vellum, they're kind of expensive though. If you have them and you, if you use a lot of vellum, I would suggest using them. There's a lot of creative ways to get vellum to stay to your paper using brads in the corners or something like that. But I'm going to show you on this one how I'm going to do the glue. As you can see, first of all, if I just put the glue behind the clear part, 
like that and stick it down, you can see the glue. But on this paper, if I take the glue and put it behind those gold stars, just a small dot, behind the gold stars, you cannot see the glue. So that's what I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to use those gold stars. And by the way, this glue, I went ahead and took care of my glues, if you saw my old video. This used to be an art glitter glue bottle. And I emptied what was left in this little one into this bigger one. I washed the bottle out, I cleaned out the tip, and I poured in, you can see that there's a bunch less in here. I went ahead and just put Elmer's in here. I used Elmer's on that other video. I've been playing around with it and I honestly don't see a difference between it and the art glitter glue the way it works. I absolutely love it. This big bottle was about five dollars on Amazon. I think they're about six now. I got this a few weeks ago. As you know the prices change back and forth. But this is 16 ounces for about six dollars shipped and I thought that was pretty awesome. I couldn't get the art glitter glue label off very well and I didn't want to soak the bottle again so I just took washi tape and covered it up because I think it's pretty. So there we go. So we're going to go ahead and work on this card next. This is a five by seven card base. And I'm going to start by cutting this vellum down to size. I'm going to cut it just a little bit smaller, just so I have a little bit of border all the way around. So I'm going to cut this at four and three quarters. And I'm going to need my other trimmer to cut the other side because this one doesn't go to seven. But I'm going to need it out anyway. And I'm going to do this by six and three quarters. And then I have that as my card base. Now there's two ways that you can adhere this down. If I was doing things all over the card, I would go ahead and first put the stuff on the front and then I can use whatever I want behind those pieces. But since this whole side of the card here is going to be open, I'm not really going to be able to do that very well. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Elmer's glue, make a couple little dots behind some of the big stars around the edge, and then I will stick it down. I'm going to put this white paper behind it so you can kind of see what I'm seeing. And this paper definitely has a right side and a wrong side. So just some of the larger stars around the edge of the paper. I'm just putting just a small dot of glue. Just a little tiny dot. Especially at the ones near the edge. Then I'm going to take my paper and do what I always do and line up the corners. 
and then just push it down. There we go. And that should be enough to mostly hold it. If it doesn't, when I put the stuff on this side, I can lift it up and put more glue behind it. And then if I find that it's lifting up over here and over here, I'll just put a brad in each corner. So now I will go ahead and cut apart my Christmas card that I am recycling. I'm going to go ahead and use these three images, I think. But first I will go ahead and cut the front of the card off as usual. And I will cut out the sentiment on the inside. Now because I don't know if I'm going to use this piece here, I'm going to just cut around it with scissors because I don't want to cut and ruin that piece. I don't think I'm going to use it, but I might want to use it for something else, a tag or something. So I will cut around these pieces. I should say I measured and I want to have them each be about one and three quarters by one and three quarters because that's the size of this. So let me make sure I can do them all at that size. Yeah, one and three quarters is going to be my smallest dimension. I'm going to go ahead and line this up as best I can. There we go. And I want to cut to the bottom of this guy. There we go. Now I have one clean edge cut on this one and I will go ahead and do the other three based on that. And then I have one and three quarters there. It's going to give me a little white, so I'm just going to go in. So it's going to be a little smaller than one and three quarters. Otherwise, I would have a border. For this one here, my limiting factor is the top of his head. I don't want to cut too much off the top of this one. And then I could cut off as close to the back of his head because there's not much of an image back there. And let's see, we have let me see how this one measures. One and five eighths. Right about one and five eighths. I'm going to cut this down to one and five eighths. There we go. So I have one and five eighths right there. I just want to double check. Yep, one and five eighths. And I will cut that one. So you're going to use the smallest dimension that you can on yours. You're the least common denominator. 
as they would say, if you're simplifying your fractions. There we go. And for him, it's going to be the front of the reindeer. That's my limiting piece right there. And the very top of it, because I don't want to miss take off any of his antlers, but I can take off some of the snow if I have to, which is just a sliver. There we go. So I have three pieces here that are very close in size. I'm going to hold them up together. Yep, I did pretty good. So I have those three squares, which would be going down the edge like that. And then I will mat those on this red. This is a piece of red um, construction paper that I got from Hollows Paper Craft. I got a huge pad of it for not a lot of money. A couple dollars. So um, I was I can do one and five eighths and then I can add a little bit. How about if I try one and seven eighths? Let's just cut that strip. Let me see how one of them looks on there. Yeah, that's perfect. And then I will eyeball the other cut. And for this, I will go ahead and use my Elmer's glue. I like to use Elmer's glue on the, when I adhere things to construction paper, because sometimes the tape will tear the construction paper. And as you can see, this comes right out of that fine metal tip, just like the art glitter glue does. And I will put that aside for a second. I'm going to trim these off, and then I will glue that other one on. I'm just going to eyeball this. This last one on. This way I don't have to measure in too many dimensions. I was having a hard time on the other video getting the Elmer's glue to come out of the fine metal tip. Well, I cleaned out the fine metal tip and I put it in this smaller bottle. It's much easier to handle and I haven't had any trouble with it at all. So I think the Elmer's glue bottle is a thicker plastic and it's harder to squeeze. And also the fine metal tip was a little clogged up. It wasn't super clogged, but it had some glue residue dried up in it. Okay, so we have this, and as you can see, now you there's a couple little spots where I got heavy on the glue where you can see it in the middle of some of the stars, but it it's hardly noticeable. I'm going to go ahead and use this gold ribbon since the stars are gold. And for the ribbon, I will use my tape. I'm going to go twice down my ribbon with this tape runner since it is sticking to vellum which is a little more non-porous than the paper. Then I'll go ahead and just stick it. Down 
here. And this ribbon is um, from the Dollar Tree. It's a glitter ribbon. It does not fray. It's almost a vinyl or a plastic. I don't really know what it's made out of. But it does not fray apart. So very, very good. Okay, so I think we're going to put Mr. Reindeer at the top since he's flying. And then we have this Santa who is whistling for the reindeer. So I think I'll put him in the middle. And then this guy, he is winking at us down at the bottom. So there we go. I think I will use some foam tape behind these to give it a little bit more dimension. If I could find my foam tape. I found it. My desk is messy over there. Over there, don't look. It's very it's messy there. And there's not any room over there for it to be messy. It's just where my thing is. But all over there it's messy. <laughs> I don't show you that part. I can keep this piece clean and then we're okay for the videos. Someday if I ever straighten out my craft room maybe we'll do a craft room video. But that probably will never happen. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on each side that way I'm not putting it on top of that ribbon for two reasons. Number one, it will stress the ribbon and the ribbon could pull off of the card since it's not tucked behind anything. And number two, I want it to be even and not um, use the, the bulk of the ribbon underneath and make them uneven if that makes sense. And I'm just cutting a piece of this. This is 1 16th of an inch thick, so it's great for cards. It gives enough dimension and it does not add too much bulk to your card. You won't have to use extra postage. If your card is too thick, you will have to use extra postage. I'm going to do the top and the bottom first because it's easier to line up the middle then. And this foam tape I got at Dollar Tree. I don't know if I just said that or not. I haven't seen this at my Dollar Tree in a long time. I haven't been at my Dollar Tree in a long time. But the last few times I had been um, I think early March was the last time I went anywhere really except to the grocery store um, they have not had it for months and months there we go I think that came out really cute. It's I think it's much prettier than the original card, which almost looked maybe childish. But this here I think looks really nice to give to somebody. And then there's that one. Now we could use this and decorate the envelope. I would put it down there. And I also don't want to forget to put the sentiment on the inside. I have been forgetting that on a lot of videos lately. I have this, but it's not going to be big enough. So I will go ahead and put it on here. And just cut a piece of that off. I always forget to put the sentiment on and then when I'm cleaning my desk off when I'm done with the video I think oh my goodness there's that sentiment will it fit in there yes it will
I am so pleased with this Elmer's glue for the price. It is wonderful. I still have almost a full bottle of art glitter glue, which I will use. I don't want to let that liquid gold go to waste. But I also want to show you how well the Elmer's works in case you have not invested in the expensive glue and you'd like an inexpensive glue. All right, we'll go ahead and cut this little guy out. Give him squared up a little bit. out and I'm just going to glue him right down there and I think I will use the art glitter glue or I mean the Elmer's glue see I'm going to make sure the glue goes to the very edge because you don't want it to get stuck in the machine at the post office and have the machine rip it off There we go. I'm going to push that down real well, make sure I'm smushing it so the glue moves to the edges. That's my technical term, smush. And then there are other scraps if you wanted to um, put them somewhere else. Again, I think I'll probably just put washi tape or something along the back at Christmas time when I send it. So we have that all set. We have that card and we have this card based on that card sketch. Thanks again everybody for watching. As always, I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't yet subscribed, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Head on over to my Facebook group, Create with Crafty Rhea. I post all of the card sketches and we share our work. There's plenty of ideas. The ladies there are absolutely fantastic. There's ton, tons and tons of wonderful ideas. I'm just blown away every day that I see all of the wonderful cards you guys are making. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think and what you plan on doing um, with this card sketch. Head on over and show us your work and let me know. You guys take care and until the next video, you know what to do. Go get crafting. Bye-bye.